find out if this storm is actually going to make landfall where I live. Biloxi, Mississippi. This is where my family is. It's our worst fears as the hurricane hunters. We've been through it, and I don't think we can do it again. All right, here we go. Our job is to go and find the center of Lee. How far off do you think we were? About five miles. Having a really hard time finding the center. Let's see on this third pick. This is the last shot. Holy wow. Let's go find another storm. When the most intense storms Mother Nature ever created threatened to wreak havoc, that's when the hurricane hunters go to work. We are flying into the most intense weather Mother Nature has created. Here we go. Hang on. In Biloxi, Mississippi, it's the Friday before the Labor Day weekend. Major Sean Cross is making the most of his time off. Flying is fun, but uh, this kind of stuff is actually my passion. Vintage Volkswagens, you know, that's my cup of tea. C-130s by day, Volkswagens by night. I'm a junk man by heart. I have been my entire life. So uh, that's kind of what I do on my time off. It looks like it's holding fuel. Yep, I think we're good. Well, I think today was a success. <laughs> no, he's on the field. For Major Brad Boudreau, the holiday weekend is a chance to catch up on family time and his son's football game. Get open. We just moved to Mississippi, and so it was pretty important to me that I was able to get to my son's first football game. And that's what it's all about. Get him, get him! I was happy that he was able to come to the football game. Unfortunately, Labor Day weekend every year falls in the middle of hurricane season, and... Uh, we normally are busy during during this weekend. And the squadron is about to get busier because 319 miles away, Tropical Depression number 13 has potential to develop into a hurricane. It looks like this thing could still possibly develop just south of Louisiana. We're just waiting to kind of hear what's going on. Let me, let me grab this real quick. I did get the phone call while we were at the game. Tropical Storm Lee was born. What makes Lee more dangerous and personal for the hurricane hunters is that one of the communities in the storm's potential path is their hometown of Biloxi, Mississippi. Cross crew, recontact all of them right now. They just alerted five minutes ago. Okay. Hey, Cross, how's it going? Uh, Lee has been upgraded to a tropical storm. It's within 300 nautical miles of land already. There was probably some choice language that came out of my mouth, but hey, this is my job. I have to go. Bye. That's just the way it is, man. It's just the way it is. People are not happy about this. Let's do it. So I turned to my wife, and I told her, I'm like, everything's on you now. The last thing I tell her is, I, I love you guys. I don't know when I'm going to be back. He's helping people, but I am I feel like it's our family sacrificing so that he can help other people. It's tough. I mean, families definitely pay the price. It weighs on everybody that lives here locally, that their families are taken care of, and that their homes are going to get through it. The cyclone has been upgraded to a tropical storm and given the name Lee. It's dangerous for a number of reasons. First is its location in the Gulf of Mexico. Storms in the Gulf of Mexico typically always are going to make landfall because it's in a closed ocean. Lee may go anywhere from Brownsville, Texas to Pensacola, Florida. Our job is to go out there and find out where it's going to go. We're going to narrow this forecast after we fly this mission today. We're going to take this from 800 miles to 150. There's a lot of money riding on this flight right here. I'm about to go find out if this storm is actually going to make landfall where I live. My family's still here, and I'm leaving, so I'm a little stressed at this moment.
Just because it's a tropical storm doesn't mean you can let your guard down. Tropical storms, winds are from 39 miles an hour to 73 miles an hour. In 2001, Tropical Storm Allison dropped nearly 37 inches of rain in the Houston, Texas area. And the, uh, the fallout was $5 billion in damage and 41 fatalities. I've got a really experienced crew. However, in the, the Arvo seat, our weather officer is brand new, Kyle Larson. He's getting his check ride. It's kind of like a test in the air. The point of the check ride would be to determine that you have the skill level to fly by yourself. Just let me know whatever you need. Your check ride. Will do. Thank you. All right. I'll back you up. I am confident, extremely confident in the abilities of Mr. Larson. Captain Larson's job today will be stressful because it's his responsibility to find the exact center of the storm so its path can be determined. This close to home, that happened too often. That's when it starts to wear on you a little bit. Yep. It's our worst fears as the hurricane hunters. When Katrina made landfall, this part of the Gulf Coast was in the northeast sector of the storm. That's what always takes the hardest hit. I walked on the beaches of Biloxi four days later and just saw the devastation in people's eyes and how it affects them and their lives are turned completely upside down. <laughs> you don't forget about it when you live down here on the Gulf Coast, all right? You just, you can't get it out of your head. I met Sean in 2004, roughly about a year before Hurricane Katrina hit. Everything, by the way, on the coast is measured in the time length before Katrina or after Katrina. I had a house and there was nothing but devastation. I hate to say, I hope we go somewhere else, but we've been through it and I don't think we can do it again. Meanwhile, at the Hurricane Hunters home of Keesler Air Force Base, Director of Operations Sean Pierce is facing a big decision. If it does come right across the water, uh, Keesler will be shut down for sure. We have a limited ability to operate, take off and land in crosswinds over 30 miles an hour, especially when our runway is wet. If it reaches 50 knots or more, uh, we have to evacuate the control tower. Despite Lee's uncertain path, Pierce makes a preemptive decision to move the planes and operations from Keesler to Houston. We need to evacuate the field, all the tails, get them out of here, get them someplace safe, and uh, ensure that we can continually operate. Tower? Go ahead. All right. Clear for takeoff. 10 miles at entry point. We're getting into the environment of Tropical Storm Link. The weather had already deteriorated. Pretty good rain right now. Yeah. Oh, this is about the biggest bumps we get today. Yeah, I got a feeling this won't be a smooth ride tonight. What I don't like about Tropical Storm, it's sloppy. It's ragged, the storm environment itself. It's a lot of rain. I can barely see the wingtip out there. This is where we really, as pilots, have to keep an eye on. All right, here we go. Trump Storm Lee is not happy with us, so it's the fight's on. miles off the coast of Louisiana, Major Sean Cross and his team of hurricane hunters have just entered Tropical Storm Lee. The storm is of particular interest to the hurricane hunters because their hometown of Biloxi, Mississippi is potentially in its path. When something pops up in the Gulf, they don't play around with it, okay? It's close. Somebody's going to get hit anywhere from Texas to Florida. There's so much riding on this mission. Luxy, Mississippi is in the right quadrant of this cone. Man, this thing's gonna throw some rain on land. Yeah. Um, it doesn't take a huge storm to cause storm surge flooding here along this part of the world. The Biloxi Gulfport area is one of the worst areas in the country for storm surge. The weather was the uh, smart telling you rainfall right now. Uh, it's still bumping up right now, you know, at 25, now 31 millimeters an hour. Man, 24 inches of rain. The bad part is there's a lot of people who live on the water here in South Mississippi. 
If Lee is on track to hit Biloxi, for Brad Boudreau, the potential for flooding could undo his dreams. Still looking at uh, more missions taking off about, again, 6 o'clock tomorrow morning, so uh, that's what we're looking at right now. I just got to run down the street, take care of some stuff at my house, just in case the river comes up and all that, I'm going to lose everything. If we're uh, in the process of building what I consider my dream home, on the water, on the river, it's going to be a, a fun place for the kids. Hiya, Mommy. Hiya. All right, let me catch Matthew's ball. We didn't want to leave Louisiana. For three years, I was commuting back and forth, and it was wearing me out. You like your new school and your new friends? Yes. So we made a decision to go ahead and make the move, move over here to Mississippi. Um, he's made it to some football practices and baseball practices and things like that. So that has made a tremendous difference. He's not as tired now, so he's able to do more things on the weekends with us, too. This place will give me that time to spend with them that, that I haven't got to do. When these floods do come, uh, potentially that river could be coming right through your front door. My kids, they don't remember Katrina. They were too young to really remember. I don't think they really understand the potential dangers yet. Getting close to the center of Tropical Storm Lee. We got a pretty good area of turbulence, pretty much straight ahead. A tropical storm is often unstable as it grows and the crew must avoid violent downdrafts hidden within powerful thunderstorms. Thunderstorms that could be on a path toward Biloxi. When it's in that tropical storm development phase, it's a little mad right now. So it's fighting, okay? It's fighting for that energy. It's fighting for that life cycle. It's gonna be bad. So I you take a deep breath, think about what I'm doing. Okay, so here we go, 27 degrees, 57 minutes north, a lot of rain. We're making progress towards the center of circulation of tropical storm wind. Okay, so here we go. You look out and you see some lightning. Oh, you've got lightning up there to the north. Kind of wicked looking. Major Sean Cross and his team of hurricane hunters are flying a mission to determine the path of Tropical Storm Lee. I'm just trying to clear up a little bit right here, man. Yeah. Oh, very pretty. Breaking out into the clear. Man, what a pretty sight this is. In their quest to nail down Lee's path, the crew has just entered the center of the storm. Now comes the most difficult part of their mission, finding the calm part of a messy storm. That gets harder at times with the tropical storms because of the lack of organization. The eye isn't as well formed. It's not very symmetrical. It's a little trashy. Can I get a 20 right, please? My job is to get to the airplane, to the center of the storm, uh, where the winds die down to almost nothing, two to one to even zero knots. Looks like we might have a little bit of an eye. Yeah, it's hard to say. Our young guy that's flying, getting his certification and doing this by himself, is going to have a little tough time. How's your, uh, how's the check ride going? How you doing? Doing all right. No pressure. Not at all. Final left. Two, nine, five. It's our job as pilots to be very responsive, turn the aircraft. He asked for five right, I give it to him. He asked for 20 right, I'm not going to argue with the guy. Two left. All right, all right, coming left. I can tell from the beginning. Having a really hard time finding the center of circulation. Kyle, how are you doing? Yeah, just watching the wind speeds right now. We're still at 33 knots. Once we find the exact center, we'll release an instrument called a drop sound to gather the position data and get an accurate track on the storm. We're starting to get close. Wind is dropping off good. He's trying to ride the diminishing winds into the dead center, but the winds are temperamental, forcing him to have to guess. Fix it here, release on now. What do you think about that first fix? How do we do? The actual uh, center was a little bit to the north of me. Alright. How far off do you think we were? I put it in that accuracy about five miles. That was, that was a tough one for me. Yeah, okay. That's alright. Well, that's what we're here for. Just, we just keep working at it. Alright, making a left turn, crew. 
A five mile miss means that the data will not be good enough to establish a path and whether Biloxi is in danger. Round two, the pressure is now greater on the second pass. Not quite convinced that he has found the center of it. I want to try and get a better fix. Let's see on his third fix. Stress is coming up a little bit. You only have so many passes. You're dealing with a finite amount of fuel, a finite amount of time, and this is most likely going to be our last chance through the storm. He would to be driving it in this time. That's right, baby. We need to make this happen. All eyes are on Kyle Larson right now. I got it. You want to beat this storm in a sense. So I want one more pass to show that I know what I'm doing. Okay, get down around 10 We got faith in you. We're getting close. This is the last shot. We call it round three on that third fix. It's a knockout. Good job, good job. And he nailed it. I think I've passed my check ride. I'm a full-fledged member of the squadron and uh, a part of the team now. Got this long. Now we're getting the data back. Still moving near north pretty much. We know pretty much where it's headed now. Within minutes, the National Hurricane Center analyzes the Hurricane Hunter's data and releases a new projected path for Lee. So New Orleans, state of Louisiana, right? That puts Biloxi, Mississippi in the northeast quadrant of Tropical Storm Lee. You never really want to be in the northeast sector, which is the most intense area of the storm. Everything on the right side is being sucked up and pushed forward in front of the storm. I've got to get home now, okay? I'm going back to Biloxi to get back to my wife and son. She's counting on that. Major Sean Cross and his team of hurricane hunters have determined that their hometown of Biloxi, Mississippi is in danger. Done my job. Now we just want to get home. We don't want to fly into weather anymore. Cruising around probably 25,000 feet. And then everybody starts running around in the back of the plane. You got to see this. You got to see this. Holy wow. It is the eye of Tropical Storm Lee over land. It is probably one of the most incredible shots I've ever seen in my life. When I get on the ground, I need to hit the ground running. Sean, I call him the Boy Scout because he hardly ever lets us get caught this close to a storm with not being prepared. But this one snuck up on us. We landed in Gulfport. Did you see Daddy? It felt really good because standing ahead was my wife and Cooper. Hey, man. That moment, you know, you can just kind of breathe a sigh of relief. Come here. I can grab these two, put them in the car, and do whatever I have to to keep them secure and safe. The National Weather Service in New Orleans has issued a tornado warning. The heavens open up and the rain is coming. cul-de-sac was already underwater. My wife's big monster truck, it's up to the floorboards. The river's coming up, and we know it's still coming up. It's still got another six feet to go. So we look out to the boathouse, you can see where we have the electrical boxes. All the electrical boxes are down a certain level with the switches and whatnot. I, I gotta get out there and get this thing shut off. Here comes the heavy rain. Put the power off.
I already got a few limbs in the yard here. My dock is submerged. And it wasn't even a Category 1 hurricane. It was only a tropical storm. You're eating good tonight. You can relax a little bit because the two most important things to me in this world are right there with me. Now I have control. If your house goes, washes away, that stuff can be replaced. But that life cannot. Storm's blown through. We went to the new house to check on it. Oh, my gosh. Look at the current. The house is fine, but these water levels that you're seeing right now are almost equal to what they had in Katrina. It was a test, and I'm feeling pretty good. You know, with our house at the elevation it's at and the way we built it, I think we're going to be fine. We could handle another 12 to 13 feet of water. Your first thought as a parent is keeping them safe, and you're going to do whatever, whatever that takes.